Cool. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, nice to see you again after some while that you work in the in your country and then collect the data. Uh, I want to know any of you that have not finished the data analysis. Everyone has finished. Okay. Okay, two. Only two. Three. More. Okay, still doing the analysis. Okay, fine, just fine. Yeah, don't worry about that. You you have still time. I mean, you have still time, okay? Uh, but maybe you should make it more speedy. <laughs> yeah, okay. So now we are coming to the end of this workshop in manuscript writing. So I would, I would like to talk about writing the abstract and then writing also a cover letter for submission to the journal. Because we also expect that you will submit the manuscript that you wrote during this workshop into the journal. Have you that have experience in help, helping someone in preparing the manuscript for submission? No? You? Yeah, so... Uh, what do you know about writing the abstract of the manuscript? Okay, so yeah, I would like to know your experience further during this session. Yeah, so this is the th the th uh, the three aspects that we would like to talk uh, during this session about the writing of the abstract. First, uh, we would like to discuss about the component of the abstract of a research article. So what should be in the abstract? The second one is about the general rules in writing the abstract. So what, what we should do and what we should not do. And the third aspect is about the types of the abstract. Okay. So what is abstract of the research article? What is the function of the abstract actually? Summary, good. So abstract is a summary. Summary for what? Okay, yeah, so summary of the components of your research article, okay? So, what is the purpose of writing the abstract? <coughs> okay, good. What else? Okay, it's a brief description about our manuscript. So that the reader will easy to understand your manuscript in a quick time okay and what what is other purpose of the abstract yeah mm -hmm. yes very good so we also should uh, write the abstract to attract the reader actually okay so please reflect that when you search for the articles while you are writing your literature review what <coughs> component that you usually read first the abstract so the abstract functions as uh, a component of the manuscript that uh, to be 
an attraction. I mean, uh, something that uh, potential to attract the reader further. So, in terms of the function as a summary, what things that we should always consider? Summary means should be compact, okay? Compact, okay? And then, yeah. And then what else? As a summary of the content of the manuscript, we should consider about the accuracy, okay? The consistency between the content of the abstract and the content of the manuscript. So don't make uh, the abstract nice, but it's not really reflect your manuscript, okay? And then the second one, you should, you should always remember um, that abstract always have a word count limitation. It's depend on the journal. Some journal make it 250, another journal maybe 300, that's the common word count, and can be 500, it's, it's really depend on the journal. So, what is your experience, Basan? Do you still remember how many words? 250. Okay. And the third one, yeah, make make the abstract to attract readers. Readers here means also the editor. Okay. When we submit the manuscript to the journal, the editor is the first person who will read your manuscript and the editor will act like you when you scrutinize the manuscript he or she will start will with an abstract okay so the editor usually after skimming the abstract and then he or she would like to know further about your manuscript or on the upper side that he or she will come to the quick decision to reject your manuscript okay so abstract is very important because this is the media to attract the readers including the editors and the reviewer let them on when we are lucky, when we are submitting the manuscript and then our manuscript uh, is considered to be relevant with the journal scope and content and then uh, attractive, has an interesting idea, then the abstract will go for the review. Uh, again, peer reviewers. Reviewers will start to read your manuscript by scrutinize and skimming your abstract first okay yeah so abstract is very important now we are coming to the second questions yeah about decision what are the, the components of the abstract so because this is the summary of the research article Usually we have also four, four components in the abstract that represent the first about the motivation or problem statement. The second one is about the methods or procedure or approach. It really depends the characteristic of the journal, but usually uh, we are in the medical or health research journal, we have methods. Yeah. And then on the third one, um, there are there is result or findings and product and the last one is conclusion and implication so this is the components this is the content of the abstract so we should ensure that the component of the abstract fulfill this overall uh, requirements so what is motivation or problem statement 
motivation problem statement are sentences that describe about the rational why we think our research problem is important yeah so when you write your abstract in in this component the motivation and problem statement component you should try to answer this question why do we care about the problem what practical scientific theoretical gaps is your research filling okay when you write the sentence yeah you should remember this question try to answer this question the second one the methods component the methods represent yeah about the procedures that we had taken in conducting the research so in the methods we describe about for instance what what were the data collection strategy what was the sampling how many participants that we selected for our study what kind of data analysis we had conducted yeah that's the method section the third one is about the result section of the abstract so it, the sentence of abstract related to the results mainly describe about what are the findings of your research if you have a lot of findings you should write the main finding in your abstract okay and the last one is about conclusion and implication so you should write about what are the larger implication of your findings you should connect with the gap of theory gap of uh, questions that you that, that your research fulfill yeah you should relate to this problem statement okay up to now any question I think you have already yeah, in your draft of manuscript. Now you just try to reflect whether your abstract are relevant or are consistent with the four components of this of the abstract. Okay? Clear? Yeah, okay. Now we are coming to the general rules in writing the abstract. Do yeah this we talk about the do yeah. first of all um, as an author it is very important to always ensure that we are we are following the guideline for the authors so again read the guideline of the authors of the journal that you plan to submit Okay. Yeah. Follow strictly. Why strictly? It's very important. I'm uh, I am uh, a section editor of the two international journals, and I usually yeah. W well, uh, let me let me give an illustration. When the guideline for the authors say that the maximum word for the abstract is 250 do not try to write 251 or 252 okay let's make um, some image of the, uh, of the editors in regard to the author okay so i would like to select i as the editor i would like to select the authors that follow the guidelines strictly in addition to the author that do not uh, do not follow the guideline 
if I find, if I found the authors that, uh, for instance, have the abstract more than the number of word count that uh, uh, stated in the guideline, I would, I would uh, recommend the author to revise it first and then send back to editor. So you lose your time, okay? You lose your time because it's some, uh, sometimes it's for, for some journal, the process is very quick, but in some other journal, maybe you, you need two weeks just to have a confirmation from the editor in the first time since your submission. Yeah, so, so, so please, us follow the guidelines strictly. The second one, provide accurate content. That's very important. Very important. Yeah, the abstracts should reflect the content of the manuscript. And then provide logical flow between the information. We have four components of the abstract: motivation, methods, result and implication and conclusion. There should be a logical flow between these four components. Okay? Let me illustrate. Yeah? When you say something about gap of research in the problem statement, in the first part, then your conclusion should relate to that. Okay? And the last one should be understandable to a wide audience. Okay. So um, again, research about the journal that you target for publication is very important. Who is their audience? Because the way we write will be different from one journal to other journal, even though we have the same topic. If I read, if I wrote uh, a manuscript for, for instance, a manuscript about tuberculosis, and then I send to International Journal for uh, International Journal of Tuberculosis and Lung Diseases, the way I wrote the manuscript should be different. If I send that the same the same idea of the manuscript into other journal like, for instance, BMC Public Health. Because BMC Public has has wider audience than IUTLD. Yeah, IUTLD usually is uh, they are TB programmer, TB research, really specific. Yeah, audience. But for BMC Public Health, the reader can be more than TB researcher. Okay. So uh, again. Uh, Research about the journal that you target is very important. What I mean with research about the journal you are targeting, including you should try to uh, download some published articles in that journal and then recognize the style of the writing. Okay? Start from what and how is then going the, the flow of the idea and then the type of the discussion, etc. So try to understand um, about about that when you are writing. So again, it's very important to target to define the target of the journal as early as possible during the plan of your manuscript development. So now we are coming to the don'ts. Yeah. Um, So, I have some resource that I think is also interesting to follow this website. This website said that uh, in writing the abstract, do not begin sentences with it is suggested, it is believed, it is felt. Um, try to accurate as possible. Do not use, for instance, 
the word important this article is very important this finding is very important do not use that article just to be as accurate as possible when writing the abstract if you write for your discussion part in the main manuscript you can have your more flexible opinion sentences but in the in the abstract try to be accurate as possible select the word that not really have a emotional taste in the sentence the second one uh, make it as active sentences as much as possible okay I think Pa Eric mentioned about that yeah do you still remember Pa Eric's session yeah okay and then do not repeat sorry for the typo do not repeat the title okay do not repeat the title in your abstract avoid jargon abbreviation and acronym yeah for instance uh, tuberculosis yeah if if you have a, a, a abbreviation of tb to represent tuberculosis you should describe that in the first time you mention that but in overall yeah the general rules uh, try to avoid to have try to avoid abbreviations in your abstract yeah so and uh, yeah if I, uh, if I want to use TB several times yeah. so is it uh, necessary to mention every time tuberculosis tuberculosis yeah in the abstract all time yeah so if the abbreviation is big not one word maybe three or four words then every time if I use then it will be much yeah uh, you can try um, if we write tuberculosis and we write TB that's the same word count only one word count no it's in the mass drug administration is three word so we can use MDA mm -hmm. so if we use yeah. every day, so yeah so if you think you should you should uh, give abbreviation instead of uh, having a uh, full uh, version uh, just describe that mass drug administration and then bracket MDA bracket okay uh, do not add any references in your abstract okay so move out reverence or discussion and then do not put unnecessary details about the methods just just the most principal one so usually what what are the data collection how many how many subject and then uh, sa sampling and then data analysis okay do not do not put any text about ethics in the abstract it's not unnecessary you you can write that in the main manuscript okay so we are coming to the types of abstract there are two types first unstructured abstract is like this yeah so we don't have any structure about the background or introduction methods uh, findings and conclusion just one paragraph as a summary this is called unstructured abstract but actually the way of describing should contain four components of the abstract okay mm. you can see here yeah this is the problem statement you can see here there is also abbreviation because there are three words okay 
Public-private partnership for improving the health of population are currently attracting attention in many countries with limited resources. The public-private mix for tuberculosis control is an example of an internationally supported PPP that aims to engage all providers, including hospitals, to implement standardized diagnosis and treatment. This paper explores mainly the local actors' views and experience about the process of PPP in delivering TB care in hospital in Yogyakarta province, Indonesia. That's the problem statement component, okay? And then we can see next, that's the methods component. The study use a qualitative research design by maximum variation sampling 33 informants were purposefully selected. The informants were involved in the public-private mix for tuberculosis control in Yogyakarta province. Data were collected during 2008-2009 by in-depth interview and analyzed using content analysis technique, triangulation, reference group checking, and peer debriefing were conducted to improve the trustworthiness of the data. That's the methods component, okay? Okay, and then coming the findings component. This analysis showed that the process of partnership was dynamic. In the early phase of partnership, the national tuberculosis program and hospital actors perceive barriers to interaction such as low enthous enthusiasm, lack of confidence, mistrust, and inequality of relationship, the existence of an uh, intermediary, etc. Yeah, that's the result. Okay. Um, and then this coming to the conclusion, yeah. um, we conclude that good partnership governance is needed for the partnership to be effective and sustainable. Only one center for the conclusion. Okay. So this is the structured abstract. Yeah, you can see here there is background, objective, design, result, and conclusion. So. Please refer to the journal guideline, yeah, because this journal, Global Health Action, uh, require the structure abstract like this, yeah, that includes background, objective, design, result, and conclusion. Okay. Now we are coming to the steps in writing an abstract. You should have your manuscript first before you are writing the abstract mm -hmm. if you would like to uh, write the abstract Please. that's fine for me that's fine while you are writing the main manuscript but don't forget to revise your abstract because it's frequently happened that I as the editors assess the manuscript with revision but the authors did not revise the abstract, okay? So always, always have a consistency between the manuscript and your abstract. So this, this I think we have discussed this, yeah? So again, word limits, yeah? Yeah? In IR, in IR, you, uh, I, a lot of you research about fidelity, so it's very important to have a fidelity also for the uh, journal guideline, okay? So we should have a high level of fidelity, yeah, to the guideline. Yeah, and then technically, yeah, when you write the abstract, <coughs> look at your main manuscript for for the four components of the abstract, uh, if you would like to develop some sentences related to the problem statement, so you should refer to your introduction or your background. 
and then yeah after reading the main manuscript write your own sentences without copying the main manuscript okay why I recommend you not copying the main manuscript maybe for the M that's fine I mean we copy the M but for the rest I mean the other maybe it is it is more concise compact when we write by not copying the manuscript because it will make more a lot of details in the abstract when you copy from your main manuscript okay so that's the technique read your the uh, your main manuscript focus in the four components but then write differently yeah write differently try to write differently yeah for instance for the uh, problem statement if you have hypothesis uh, so pick out the major hypothesis or uh, if we want to write the objective yeah, pick out the major objective it's not necessary to write all of your study specific objective into the abstract okay uh, yeah the sentence about the methods yeah take out from the method section yeah and then result yeah just pick the major one yeah from the result section arrange into a single paragraph yeah it's really depend if you have an unstructured type yeah just make it as a one paragraph if you have a structure paragraph structure abstract put it as the structure as the structure yeah this is very important reread and re-edit again good writing needs frequent reading and editing okay check the flow of information consistency of the content yeah and then check the word count yeah reduce if necessary when you write in the first time your draft of the abstract do not worry about the word count okay just write and after that try to revise try to reduce the number of words keywords yeah you as the author should put the keywords any of you familiar with the mesh database in the PubMed if you would like to know about the standardized keywords you can refer to the mesh database in the PubMed but we can also have our own keywords that's usually common words yeah for instance tuberculosis that's also available in the mass but that's also the common word uh, and then public private partnership for instance check whether that's a standardized uh, keyword health services health care or health services something like that you should check with the mass that with the mass database and some journal have reg uh, have a regulation that the keyword should be some words that not in the title yeah for instance global health action they require the keywords that are not uh, that are not reflect in the title yeah what is the function of keywords okay summary but on the other hand there is a function the other function of keyword what is the other function of keyword keyword 
will be used for searching. So think about the keyword that make the other the other the other researchers or someone's uh, easy to find your article. The more easy the manuscript that your manuscript uh, find by others, the more potentially cited by others. Because if uh, if someone have uh, put the title, the keyword as the title, uh, in the searching, that will be, I mean, that's a, the machine, the searching machine will, will facilitate that. So if you have more keywords that are not in the title, means you have more opportunity to have uh, others to find your articles. Yeah, without the title, I mean, without the word in the title. Okay. So, after you have the abstract, I would like to recommend that you should ask your colleague to review. Okay, because, yeah, this is a good parameter of having an understandable abstract. Okay. Sometimes it's yeah, it's like myself. Yeah, um, I think that my writing is clear for me. But when I give that manuscript into my friend, to my friends, she or he can comment which part that are not clear because even though we think it's, it's, it's clear already but sometimes for others it's not like that okay so uh, ask your colleague to review your abstract and revise okay okay any question clear yeah now I'm continuing to the second topic in the session about writing a cover letter. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you have done with your manuscript, you have uh, checked everything that uh, you think that's ready for submission, then you should write. Uh, a cover letter to the editor yeah even though now the system for the submission is online one but still cover letter a cover letter still needed yeah we should uh, we should copy paste from our letter electronically to the system okay so it's still important yeah, to have a good cover letter so uh, we will discuss about the purpose of a cover letter for a research article submission and we, ought, uh, we will discuss about the general template of a cover letter. Okay, now I'm all, I'm, I, I will start with the question, why a cover letter is important? Tila? Why we should write a cover letter to the editor? editor? Yes, very good. Yeah, to attract the editor. Very good. So, um, by writing a cover letter, I think it's a chance to lobby the editor. To lobby means to approach, to uh, to make the editor ensure or attract to our manuscript or to make the editor answer their, that our manuscript is a good one okay because the cover letter the strong of the cover letter will influence 
the decision of the editor to send out the manuscript into peer review or to just to reject. Okay. And then the third one, uh, the cover letter also uh, is necessary because in the letter we we argue that our manuscript is in a good fit with the journal scope. Yeah. The reason of rejection of the manuscript by the editor in the first time when, when you send and then by two days or three days or one week you receive a rejection for instance from the editor is usually because not not really sometimes it's not really about the the quality of the methodology but more about the relevance of your topic into the journal scope yeah yeah for instance once when i was a student a phd student i have a manuscript about quality of tuberculosis services and then i send that manuscript to the journal of health policy and planning okay and then after three days i receive a letter from the editor mentioned that sorry we could not um, further proceed your manuscript because it's not in our uh, scope of journal so again in the cover letter it's very important that you um, try to argue about the fit of your manuscript into the journal scope and highlight the findings again this will influence the decision of the editor okay so now we are coming to the format what is the format of the cover letter so it's uh, right as a business letter it's not a personal letter uh, so do not write like for instance you write to me hello Bu Ari I was your student etc etc no yeah just write as a bus business letter yeah and address the editor formally formally yeah and then you can again please research about the journal okay research about the journal the scope of the journal the name of the chief editor for instance so in the cover letter for instance uh, global health action the chief editor is uh, professor nawi then you can write here professor nawi i'm sending a manuscript blah 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 later on we can discuss yeah the sample about the cover letter and then there are also several paragraph in the cover letter the first paragraph state the name of the manuscript and the authors as well as type of manuscript of your submission is for instance i'm write, i'm writing to you on behalf of the authors to submit this manuscript title authors affiliations for for the publication as a research article because in the journal it can be research article it can be review it can be short communication it can be a public health uh, round something like that yeah and then still in the first paragraph add the rationale behind your study and the major findings from it so at the sentence for instance our study has a novelty in terms of this 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 the major findings are this 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 yeah so at the rationale behind your study and the major finding from it yeah the second paragraph put your explanation why your manuscript will be a good fit for the journal so write something like our manuscript 
ma uh, this manuscript will be fit with the rational with the relevance of the journal scope which is just copy paste from your from the website of the journal See, uh, refer to the the website yeah so do not simply stand that your manuscript is of the interest to the field or no file but try to explain yeah yeah explain what is the relevance yeah so that's the second paragraph the third paragraph is a, a statement from the authors that this manuscript is original original here means is not published in elsewhere before or is not considering for publication in the same time in other journal because that's not ethic for publication okay so state that this original not part of the manuscript has been published before uh, nor is any part of it under consideration for publication at another journal declare conflict of interest yeah maybe no conflict of interest but if you have conflict of interest conflict of interest means for instance if you if you receive some sponsorship for for your research yeah uh, that can influence the result this can happen for instance for our, for randomized control trial of new product or something like that but if you just receive the finding just explain that this study receive funding from yeah the authors declares no conflict of interest but we have received funding but we have no conflict of interest okay uh, sometimes uh, some journal asks you to write some potential re reviewers if you if 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 the manuscript allow you as the authors to propose some names for the reviewers just to but sometimes we uh, the journal also ask the researcher to mention some names that should not review your manuscript yeah because sometimes it's happened i mean sometimes one person to other person one researcher to other researcher do not really have a good communication and then we can avoid for further conflict during the review so that we should put the name yeah but otherwise put it i mean it's not it's not compulsory to mention this uh, reviewers and uh, who, someone who should not review it's really defend the journal so this is some example uh, of template of the couple letter i think you can download later on this is from a big uh, publisher for the research journal taylor and francis you can uh, searching some templates about the cover letter um, the components yeah i have mentioned to you yeah some paragraph this this can be i, I hope that you can write it you can read it so this is the name yeah uh, your address for instance and then the date dear editor name and then uh, this is the first paragraph the second paragraph the last paragraph and this is the declaration about conflict of interest and then list of reviewer if you have uh, and then just yeah thank you for the consideration for this manuscript <coughs> sincerely your name so it's a business letter yeah um so again when you write the cover letter the sentence should be persuasive yeah because because the cover letter will help you as the authors to sell your manuscript to the editor okay so it should be persuasive 
So do not write like this. Dear editor in chief, I'm sending you man I sending you our manuscript entitled blah blah blah. We would like to have the manuscript considered for publication in this journal. Please let me know of your decision with best regard. Just like this. It's not persuasive. Okay? It's just telling. I'm sending to you. Okay, fine. Okay? But a cover letter should be persuasive because it will help the editor to have some, again, some insight about your manuscript. Yeah? Before the editor read the abstract, they usually read the cover letter and then the abstract and and then the introduction okay introduction part then after that usually in the editor will have a decision stop uh, reading or or stop reading and reject or further reading and then send to the peer review yeah, okay. I think that's a short session. If you have any question. So any of you thinking about the journal that you want to submit? Yeah. Um, if you did something but you were in another university. Yeah. But you wrote it for example here at NPM, which institutional affiliation? You can you can have both here. And yeah, yeah. I, I I will recommend to have two evaluation. That's fine. Okay. So your office will be happy, also. Okay. I'm not happy. <laughs> Any other question? No question? Yeah, Prof. Uud uh, told me, Ibu Ari, your student is uh, uh, has shown a stressful face during the session. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have planned, but still, I mean, the, the date still considered by the uh, Prof. Uud, uh, who will be the coordinator of the workshop. So there will be a workshop, another workshop, one day workshop, that facilitate you to meet the supervisors. Okay, because, uh, yeah, I know maybe some of you have not meet the supervisor at all or maybe yeah so um, the one day one day workshop one day or two day is still in the in the in the plan of prof Uud, but uh, the concept is um, it will facilitate you to finish the manuscript and the thesis means not only for the manuscript but also for the thesis okay and uh, yeah, I think Prof. Uud will mention about that later on and I will uh, ask Prof. Uud to make a decision soon uh, in regard to the date. Yeah, but I mean we still have time, right? Yeah, it's still the end of July. Yeah. Uh, well, from academic calendar, I think the latest will be September, something, some date in September for the uh, for the thesis defense. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a thesis seminar in the early September or end of August, and then have a thesis defense in September, you will have a graduation if you pass. Uh, <laughs> to pass uh, in October, yeah. So you still have time, yes. You still have time. So uh, for you that you are still in the analysis, don't worry. You still have time, and just like this, keep calm and write down. Just write, okay? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. But I I have received some draft of manuscript. I mean, fr from my uh, students during my supervision. So I I have at least I have now I have three manuscript has already sent to me. It means that uh, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> so I think some of you have uh, some progress. But again, do not worry. Just keep calm because one, <laughs> because the, the one, uh, uh, one work with other work maybe cannot be compared. I mean, just sometimes just, uh, just keep calm. Keep calm. <laughs> just focus on yours. Okay. <laughs> Any of you um, have a chance to meet the supervisor? Okay, just raise your hand. Who who already met the supervisor? Kamu termasuk nggak? No, no. Okay, so half yeah. Okay. Any of you have difficulties to make an appointment with the supervisor? No. Some, I think some is busy, like uh, Ibu Yayi. She is busy, but she's telling that after this date, I will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The rest is busy. Hmm? The rest is busy. <laughs> okay. So, even though you show the stressful face, it doesn't mean anything. No. <laughs> It's still okay for you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yes, um because it's uh, yeah, it's it's more easy if you have the thesis first and then you write the manuscript. And now you are writing the manuscript in parallel with your thesis. So yeah, I I understand. Yeah. So maybe you, uh, any of you that has not finished the data analysis, I think you should put more attention in the data analysis first okay data analysis first and then write your result yeah write your result because this is parallel i would like to suggest you can do the parallel i mean write the result for the manuscript first and then put in the thesis and then complete later on for your thesis that's also fine yeah but you should finish your data analysis soon yeah mm -hmm. any other question no okay so i will let you 30 minutes uh, early uh, early break yeah from this session you, sh you should go for the coffee or something <laughs> or <laughs> dinner together. <laughs> yeah? Uh, or, <laughs> or jogging or something like that. Okay? <laughs> and then back for writing. Yeah, later on this tonight. So thank you very much. Again, if you have any question in regard to the academic purpose, yeah? Please let me know. Yeah, send email to Emilia for the academic purpose. CC to me. Yeah, or just to Emilia because Emilia will forward to me. And then for other purpose, yeah, non-academic purpose, just email Yuyun. So we have now only two staff. Yeah, surrounding you. Okay. But I believe, I believe all of you will survive. Yeah. 
all of you will reach the same yeah <laughs> the same status in October so just keep calm but write on and continue to work okay thank you very much and good afternoon